one person asked, well, how do you release the shame that you're carrying around? You know, there are two sources of shame. If we're doing some things that are shameful, well, first of all, we got to stop doing that. And a lot of times we're so locked into it, we don't know how to stop. We need help for that. But whether it's something done to me or something that I did, uh, Jesus is really the answer to shame. I don't know how people uh, really totally resolve shame without knowing that Jesus died on the cross so that their sins could literally be blotted out white as snow, that God is rich in mercy and through Christ I can be free. But sometimes we're walking around with this shame that was done to me, a traumatic event early on, and the thing that shame does is it thrives in secrecy and silence. So we have to figure out a way to come out of secrecy and silence. David said, and I think he said this in the King James this way, my bones waxed old in my silence. We really get sick uh, when we don't release and talk about the things that we've been involved with. And James 5.16 in the New Testament says, you know, we need to confess our sins one to another and pray for each other that we could be healed. So it's a call to openness. So if I want to f be free of the shame, I need to kind of look at some things going on in my life. A lot of times us men are angry. And so we need to stop and see if shame might be the source of that anger, the compulsive behavior, uh, how I compensate for the shame. Is all of that there? Because I want to be able to see who I really am and what I'm dealing with. And a lot of times it's easy to live in denial. Second thing is, like I was saying, we need to open up to someone who can be trusted, somebody that's competent and can help us, can accept us, not be uh, astounded by what's happened. We need that person. Third thing is we need to ask, when we did something or if something was done to us, what did we lose? What was taken from us? Was it my innocence or was it my uh, confidence? Whatever it was. And we need to grieve that. And there's a process for grieving that works. And then the fourth thing is that when we embrace grieving and we work through coming to a place of forgiving ourselves or forgiving this other person, when I accept this as something I can't change, but something that I can live with and resolve, and I know that God is rich in mercy, and I want to be merciful to another person and to myself, then we have the ability to be free. And I would just say, lastly, it's a process. It's not a quick fix, and it's not an instant solution. But enter that process today because you want to get through the shame and not let it impact your life as soon as possible.